And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Melody. And today we're taking a look at Empire's Age of Discovery. Now this is a, a remake of uh, Age of Empires 3, the board game from Eagle slash Tropical Games. And Eagle Griffin Games has remade it. And it's a very heavy game. I mean, physically heavy. <laughs> uh, this is one of the heaviest games I ever picked up. And that's because there are tons of miniatures inside. I could think of heavier games, but yeah. Well, not many though. Um, and the, there, there's like, it, they can have up to six players and each player has like 40, 50 little miniatures that you're putting on the board. But this isn't a war game. This is a worker placement game. Now I've already played the, the first version of this game. I love it, it's in my top 100. But I thought, you have, you've never played the old one, right? Mm -mm. So this is the first one that Melody's played. Do you like it? We'll find out. The game comes with an optional Builders expansion, which I don't see why you would ever not use, so we're just going to pretend it's part of the game. You'll also notice that I'm using these uh, metal coins here for money. The game actually comes with regular coins like this. The metal ones were an upgrade to the game. But each player is going to cut a color, and you'll notice that you get a whole ton of figures of that color. There's several different types of each of the figures, so let's take a look at these. The, each of these figures has different special abilities. You have your regular uh, dudes that are in the game, and then you also have your trader, your soldier, your missionary, your builder, and your captain. And some of them have different shaped bases. If they look similar, for example, sometimes it can be easy to, at a quick glance, uh, not tell which one's a soldier, which one's the captain, but one has a circular base, the other has a square base. Now, this game is going to take place over uh, eight rounds. There's three rounds in, in the first era, then three rounds, then two rounds. At the end of rounds three, six, and eight, there's going to be a scoring, and that scoring is going to depend on how many people are in each of these areas. Now, each round of the game, players are going to get five workers. You'll notice here, by the way, that there's Holland. Each player can take a country that gives them a special power, or they can pick not using the special powers, use the special powers. But anyway, you get five available workers. And it's possible that other things will give you other workers that you can use. And in player order, each player is going to take turns putting those workers over here in different places. You'll be able to place workers up here in initiative. That gives you money. And you can, it, you know, if you go here, you have to go in number order. But if you go there, you're going to get money and you can move up in higher position order. If you never go there, you're going to be stuck in the same position the whole game. The colonist dock, this is a very important spot. Here you can put people and when those, when it comes time to activate this, everyone's going to place out all their workers and then you're going to take turns activating each of these sections from top to bottom. When you activate the colonist dock, you're going to be able to send people to explored areas. Now at the beginning of the game, every area is not explored except for the Caribbean, so you'll be sending people to the Caribbean. But there's other areas that will be explored once this token's removed, and you can send people there. The order that they come comes from up there. Now, when you send a regular dude, he just comes and is a regular dude. If you send a missionary well, to the New World, they convert someone, and you basically add a regular dude to that spot, so they become two. When you send a trader, the guy with the bag, you will get five coins when you show up at the New World. And if you send a builder, there's a chance that more victory points will be scored in an area. And a soldier can cause havoc later on. So there's reasons to send different people. Then up here are trade goods. And trade goods are going to give you money at the end of every turn. If you have any three trade goods, you get a coin at the end of every turn. But if you have three of the same kind, you'll get three dollars and four of the same kind, six. So you want trade goods, and you have four spots here that you're going to be able to pick in turn order one, two, three, four of those goods. Here, whoever has the most people here is going to get the ship. Now the ship, there's ways to get victory points with ships, but for the most part, ships are a wild trade good. That's great, because that's a way to get money. So you, whoever has the most people here gets the ship. Captains in this box count as two, and merchants in this box count as two. 
Then down here are capital buildings. Now, capital buildings, they cost different money based on what area you're building the building, and there's going to be different buildings. In area one and two, they're all about helping you out. In area three, they're going to be giving you different victory points as time goes by, like this one here gives you a victory point for every worker on the specialist event box. So they give you different victory points, and now you get a lot of victory points from these. But when you go here, you pay the cost of the building, and in turn order, you pick which one you want. If you send a builder to this area, you will get a five coin discount on buying these buildings. Some of these buildings are pretty cool, like the monastery here. This one here, once you built that, every turn, you'll get a missionary for free. Um, actually, the New World Mission does the same thing. This one gives you a free colonist every turn. This one lets you swap a trade good with an opponent every turn. This one simply gives you $20. Then there's the discovery area. In this area, you can throw lots of different people here, and this is the only spot where you can save people from turn to turn. When it comes time to discover, you may say, I'm gonna go discover, I'm gonna discover New Granada here. So you pick how many of your guys in the discovery box you're gonna send out, remembering that captains count as two. Hooray, I have two captains, and I have a soldier I send here, and that's a total of five, so I turn over the tile, and I needed two people to defeat the folks who are there. So I sent five. That's plenty. I sh maybe I should have sent less. I get, I get to keep the tile, which is four victory points at the end of the game. I get three times the amount of soldiers I have. So I brought one soldier, so I get three coins plus another coin, four. The more soldiers, the more money you can get from these tiles. Um, the captains help, you know, add to the number that you need to send. These will range from one to, or I think one to five. And once every area has been discovered, you then will be drawing from this discovery deck where you can eat up to six people and these to give you points. But when you take this tile here, yay, you've discovered that area and you get to put a guy in that area, a regular worker in that area. Gets, so you get to start there, and now people can start sending colonists there. You also notice that each area has a resource there. The first person to get three colonists in any region gets that resource. All right, back over here. The next area on the board is the specialists. The specialists, when you go there, you simply get a person of that type for your next turn. So I put a guy here. And next turn, I get a soldier. Next turn, I get a captain builder. I can pay $5 and get anyone I want, one per box. And finally, warfare. Warfare basically just means if there are different people in an area and you don't want them in that area, you can send someone to warfare and shoot them. So let's say yellow uses the warfare. He can go here and go, Pfft. now he's tied with blue for having the most people in an area. And at the very bottom here, we have player order. Each player is just going to put a token there to keep track of player order. Now, at the end of turns three, six, and eight, we score. Whoever has the most in each region on the board is going to get six points. Second most is two. Ties for second place are worthless. Ties for first place only give you two. So you want to be alone in each region. At the end of round three, you will also score for any tiles, the buildings that give you extra points. And you will also score in remembering all the different uh, discoveries and cards that you've explored. Whoever has the most points is the winner. There's also another side of the board here, which is essentially the same thing, although it has some different resources, which you can purchase separately, so I don't know that you'll play it unless you buy that extra stuff. And there's a scoring board here that you can see where you can keep track of scoring, although it's kind of a very, it's an annoying scoring board. This is, this is almost worthless. All right, Melody, what did you think of the game? I like the game. I really do like worker placement games, and this one was a good one. I liked um, how you go out, discover stuff, and get items and the buildings and all that stuff. stuff. <laughs> yeah, really, there's so much about this game that I enjoy. I like the worker placement, like Melody says, but I like in this game how the different workers do different things. Mm -hmm. I like how you get the missionaries and they go and they become two people. Or I got super missionaries where they go become three people um, there's and just the, the order they go and there's like an area control so it's area control mixed with worker placement mixed with special buildings mixed with a kind of a push your luck how many guys do you want to send out like I would send three guys out and be like I hope I can discover this and sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't so I, I enjoy that because you can save up enough guys to make sure you discover the area but then you're like, oh, I sent six guys and it was a three. So you wasted three guys. But I mean, that's just the way it goes. Was there any of the uh, different workers that you like, type that you like the best? Um, I think the merchant, because um, he got me a lot of money that would help me. 
Oh, yeah, he gets to $5 every time he goes to the New World. The one thing I didn't like, though, was if you had all these extra people plus the five that you originally put out, it was kind of hard to like place people out after a while because there's like nothing out there. Well, the game that Melody played in was a five-player game, and yes, in a five- and six-player game, the spots are more crowded. I didn't find that as much of a problem because you can always go to the discovery area with your extra people, and it makes things really tight. The buildings, I think, are really cool. Um, in the original game, ships were extremely powerful. Here they've not nerfed them, but there's enough other stuff in the game that ships aren't necessarily the best, although you should still try to get the ships. I also like each person's special ability, how they had that one thing that they could do. Yeah, I really like that. For example, the Spanish people automatically discover an area at the very beginning of the game. That's all they have. But that's a cool power because it kind of gets them a foot in the new world. And for those of you worried about the soldiers attacking, it's not that bad. There's a few attacks. You can take out a couple people's, uh, couple people's things and kind of take over an area. But that's a. You say like wars didn't really happen that much. I still barely see a war. You can pay ten dollars when you go to one of those warfare things, and you can fight someone in every territory where you and that person are in. That's a lot of money, ten dollars in this game, and I just don't see it happening that often. Now, the question is, is this game? What's the differences between this and the original game? Well, first they added the builders expansion, which I think is a necessary thing. It's a lot of fun. Uh huh. What's the builders? The builder expansion added the builders, and it added more buildings, and it added the special powers for each country. Okay. All necessary. Um, the game itself is a very high price point, but at the same time, I think that's a big deal. Uh, it, this one's a tough one, folks. I want to tell you that you should get this game, because you really should. It's amazing. But it is over $100 for this game. Is it worth it? Do you get enough plastic miniatures? Yeah, you do, and yeah, there's a lot going on, but it's still a heavy price point. And I was very disappointed that they include another side of the board, but didn't add in the pieces to use on that side of the board. That, so why include it? So that I'd be like, oh, I have to go buy these pieces now. For the price point of the game, they should have included those pieces, in my opinion. Um, you don't need those metal coins, but they are nice. Um, and, and all the pieces are, there's still the problem of maybe telling the pieces apart from each other. Sometimes it looks like a big blob of plastic, but the changing the bases did help that a little bit. Um, but still, overall, I love this game when I first played it over a decade ago and still really enjoy it. What are your final thoughts? Um, I can't wait to play it again. All right, well, fantastic. You will get a chance, because we're keeping it! Yay! <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Right. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.